I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise. Today we have a very special program. Today we are going to feature my father. That's right. That went to heaven in 2003. Three, yes. But it, it, the, this, this, DV, this DVD that we're going to take the message from is called This is the Day. Now, Jesus was refused. He was rejected. But he became the chief cornerstone. And the Bible says he spoiled or disarmed principalities and powers and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, there's no other salvation except in the name of Jesus. This yes. is the day of salvation. This is a day of deliverance. This is a day of, deliver, of safety, pr preservation, healing, soundness, dominion. Whatever, else, whatever you need, this is your day. You know, honey, I remember when he preached this. It was just so exciting. Yes. Because he could say it just like no other person. Oh, could. yeah. He, he, he had a way of saying things like nobody else. Yes. I know you're going to enjoy this today. So let's go now where... My father is preaching. This is the day. You have your Bibles tonight? Open them to the 118th Psalm. Psalm 118. We're going to begin to read with the 19th verse and read down through the 24th verse. Psalm 118, beginning to read with the 19th verse. Thank God for the Word. Hallelujah. 19th verse of the 118th Psalm. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we sing the chorus sometimes, you know. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. And I think a lot of times people think about, you know, the... The, what day of the week it is, you know, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday, and that's not what he's talking about at all. Amen. He's not talking about some weekday or some particular day in that sense. This is the day which the Lord has made. Now notice, the stone which the builders refuse has become the headstone of the corner. That's talking about Jesus. See, he's talking about the day when, when the stone which the builders refuse has become the headstone of the corner. Hallelujah. The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous. It's marvelous. This is the day. Hallelujah, the Lord is made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Now come over to the New Testament. Notice in uh, the, the, there are several instances, for instance, that say about the same thing, the, the four, three of the four Gospels. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, the 21st chapter and the 42nd verse. Luke, the 20th chapter and the 17th verse and Mark, the 12th chapter, and the 10th verse. Now, all of them say about the same thing. Don't use the same word necessarily, but it's the same thing. Now, notice, Jesus saith unto them, Did you never read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. Now, you see it says here in, in the Psalms, 
in King James Version, they refused. Well, if they refused, they rejected, didn't they? Amen. The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you could look up those three references, and you'll find all of them say about the same thing. Now then, coming over to the Acts of the Apostles, the fourth chapter. Uh, notice the 11th verse. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Now notice the next verse, the 12th verse. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. So he's talking about the day of salvation, isn't he? Now notice Ephesians, the second chapter in the 20th verse. Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, talking about the church says, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now notice, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. 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 Now, turn on over a little further in your Bibles to 1 Peter and notice something that he said in the second chapter of 1 Peter. We're going to read the fourth, fifth, and sixth verses. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, hallelujah, and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also, hallelujah, it is committed in the, in the Scriptures, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. I just read all of those scriptures to you to see that he's talking about, praise God, not some day of the week, but a day. Hallelujah. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Amen. And this day is a day of salvation. We read that verse there in Acts 4.11. Amen. About this is the stone which was set at naught. You'll notice you have three different expressions. It says he was refused. It says he was rejected. It says he was set at naught. Well, that's just another way of saying the same thing. Amen. Of you builders. But he is become the head of the corner. And there is salvation, no salvation in any other name. None other than his. Praise God. So then, this is the day of salvation. Glory to God. We will rejoice and be glad. Be glad. Now, you just wonder about some people, whether they're saved or not. They always look so sad. Amen? But this is the day, glory to God, the day of salvation. Amen. Paul said, writing to the Romans, you remember in Romans, the first chapter and the sixth verse, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first also, the Gentile or the Greek. Praise God. Now, in this word salvation, you'll notice in the Schofield Bible, Mr. Schofield brings out in the footnote, that the Greek and Hebrew words for salvation imply, he says, the ideas of deliverance, safety, preservation, healing, and soundness. Glory to God. Glory to God. So it's a day of salvation. That word salvation is an all-inclusive word. Praise God. Thank God it is a day of deliverance. It is a day of deliverance. It is a day of safety. It is a day of preservation. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, you look at some Christians. I've gone to churches, particularly in years gone by, 
I've gone to churches, and by looking at the congregation, they all look so sad. They all look like, you know, that they had, uh, you know, if they had any friends, they'd lost all of them. You, you, you'd think by looking at them that they were pickled, put up in vinegar. But the Bible never said a word about the saints being pickled. The Bible said that they're preserved. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And in this word salvation also, as Mr. Schofield even admitted, he, amen, healing's in it. Glory to God. Amen. It's a day of deliverance. It's a day of safety. It's a day of preservation. It's a day of healing. It's a day of soundness. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen? This word salvation, as Mr. Schofield points out, is the great inclusive word of the gospel. Gathering into it all. Hallelujah. All that it implies, all that's ours. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Thank God. So this is a day, day of salvation, day of healing. This is the day. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. You know, actually, because of a low degree of faith, because the folks have not been adequately taught, well, we have to have healing services and pray for the sick and minister healing. But if folks really knew the truth, they don't need to have anybody to pray for them. Amen. If they would know the truth and act upon the truth, praise God, because this is the day of healing. Well, if it's the day of healing, then you don't have to question, is it God's will? Is it God's plan? Because this is the day. This is the day. Now, it's the simplest thing in the world, if you, you know what I mean, to get people healed. It's an easiest thing in the world if you can just get them to listen to you. The Bible said concerning Jesus in the Gospels more than once, talks about the multitudes that came to hear him. It says they came to hear and to be healed. Now, see, a lot of people come to be healed, but they don't come to hear. But hearing and healing go together. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now, for instance, I was preaching a meeting right here in Oklahoma in 1950. Well, the Lord had just appeared to me a few days before in that vision in Rockwall, Texas. And I have had always ministered to the sick. Even as a Baptist, I got people healed. And a Baptist boy preacher, praise God, I got people healed by laying on their hands and donning with oil and so on and, and teaching them to believe. But then you can minister with anointing, but yet people still have to believe. Amen? And so uh, I was ministering with the anointing but you know, you preach for an hour and give an altar call, and then minister to the sick on a one-to-one -one basis, and uh, you get tired. And when you get tired, it's difficult to yield to the Holy Ghost. In fact, a lot of times the anointing will just lift from you. In other words, just like a just like a bird sitting on your shoulders, just fly away. And, and so I went so far, and then the anointing lifted. See, because the Lord said you have an anointing to do something doesn't mean that the anointing's in manifestation all the time. Now, preachers, pastors, preachers, teachers get anointed to preach and teach, but the anointing's not in manifestation all the time, for if it was, you'd be preaching 24 hours a day. Amen. But you see, you prepare yourself and believe God, and the anointing comes. And when it lifts, you ought to shut up, but most of us don't. <laughs> Might as well say amen. So anyway... Amen. But I'm ministering to the sick, you see. I'm taking them one by one. Now, in smaller meetings, you can do that. You, you'll get a bigger percentage of them healed if you'll do it. Yes, yes. Amen. But in big meetings like this, you, you, you know, because we're just going to be here one week, you couldn't do that. See, I'd hold meetings sometime. In fact, I got to the place I wouldn't accept a meeting less than three weeks. And I'd hold meetings three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and I think one nine weeks. Well, you got plenty of time. I remember one fellow came that was deaf. Now, it took me 45 minutes just with that one man, but I got both ears open. Ten years later, saw him, he still healed. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I'll let you in on a secret. With a small church, you could do it. With a big church, you couldn't. Uh, but uh, you, you've heard me say, and sometimes we need to qualify the statement because people can misjudge it and put their own interpretation on it. You've heard me say that in 12 years of pastoral work, my wife and I never did bury one church member. Now, I never thought of that. But in one of our seminars, my wife asked her, said, Honey, while you were teaching this morning, it just dawned on me. In 12 years, we never did bury one church member. Well, I went back and looked over my records. And in 12 years' time, I had only either preached or assisted in seven funerals. That's all. And they were either somebody that's kin to somebody that's in my church, or there's somebody that used to be a member of that church years before and moved away before I ever came. And uh, they passed away. They brought them back there to bury them, you see. Well, now that doesn't mean that folks are not going to die. Because he didn't promise it wasn't going to die. I'll take sickness away from the midst of you. The number of your days you'll fulfill. But now in church, I very seldom, in church now I'm talking about, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and for the first number of years, 1937, for instance, to 1943, I'm strictly a preacher. I, I don't teach. I don't like to teach. But then a teaching gift fell on me. I know when it came, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Praise God. I knew exactly why. It's just like somebody come along, you know, and had a, had a cloak and throw it on you. And I stopped dead still. I was right in the middle of the living room in my house. And I said, I know what that is. That's a teaching anointing. Now I can teach. Before, I never did like to teach. Boy, I'm preaching. I'm a preaching. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I strictly preached, but in church, I very seldom publicly taught, or I didn't do any teaching at all those years, but preached on the subject of faith, or even preached on the subject of healing. Very seldom. Very seldom. Preached on other subjects. But you see, if somebody in my church is sick, and I don't remember ever, ever having two at once, most of the time just one person. I can devote my full time. I, I've taught for two and a half hours to that one person. Same thing I teach on faith today, see, but sharing with them personally. And, and just go back to see them every day sometimes. And, and get them located. You locate people with what to say. They're not in position to receive healing. Sometimes you had to talk them out of dying and talk them into living. Because you're not going to get somebody healed, and you believe for healing, and them believing they're going to die, and talking about them going to die. And sometimes it would take you weeks to do it. The same person. And that's the reason I said, if I could, if I could on a one-to-one -one basis deal with people, most of the time I'd get them healed. Now, once in a while, the Lord will show you, I mean, why they won't get healed. Not, not that it's not his will. It is his will for them to be healed all the time. But you see, you can forfeit your right to God's best. Are you out there? You're going home. Amen. Amen. Praise God. By failure to discern the Lord's body. Now, you remember there in that 11th chapter, talking about the communion? For this cause, for this cause, many... Paul's writing to the church at Corinth. Many in the church at Corinth, same thing would be in the church in Tulsa, wherever. Many, for this cause, many are weak and sickly and sleep. That is, their bodies are asleep in the grave, spirit going to be with the Lord. Now, for what cause? Not rightly discerning the Lord's body. For this cause. See, there's a cause. Church people, Christians, I'm talking about really born-again, spirit-filled people, people that know the truth. Some folks are sick just because they don't know what the Bible teaches. But there is a cause. 
Paul says the main cause is not discerning the Lord's body. Now, that has a twofold, op- twofold application. First of all, discern the fact that his body was broken for our physical sustenance. With his stripes, we're healed. See, you can take the Lord's Supper. That's when you take that bro- break that bread. That's a type of the broken body. You take the, the juice. That's a type of the blood of Jesus that washes away your sins. Well, you can do that all day, but if you don't discern, see, and know the fact, amen, you'll stay sick. Secondly, you need to discern that the Lord's body is the church, and it's one, and walk in love towards fellow members. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, you could really get to doing a little meddling here real easily. Amen. I said, amen. Amen. Say amen if you can. If you can't, say oh me. This is the day of salvation. Say it out loud. This is the day of salvation. This is the day of healing. This is the day of healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, let's go a little bit further. This is not only the day of salvation, deliverance, healing. This is the day of dominion. Romans 6, chapter 14, verse said, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law but under grace. Now, it it would not be an injustice to that Scripture to read it like this. Satan shall not have dominion over you. I know you enjoyed that message. Now, actually, that was only about 15 or 17 minutes of the whole message, which was an hour and 20 minutes long. Yes. And that is part of our offer. This is the day DVD teaching the whole message. If you'd like to hear the whole message, it's it's right here on this DVD, okay? Yes. Also, we have my book, How to Fulfill Your Divine Destiny, and then... Your dad's foundations. Foundations of faith. It's a stu- it's a study guide on uh, uh, foundations in faith. Now all three of these, the DVD, this is the day, uh, the complete message yes. of what you heard just an excerpt from on the day's program, and then my book, fulfilling your destiny and fa- uh, faith foundations for faith by dad. And these are all for a gift of $45 or more. Just go right now to, the, to your computer yes. or, or, or give us a call and order them right now. You want to get this, especially get this DVD of Dad doing this message. It's a yes. special message that he did. And we just have now released it, actually. Yes, it's just yes. now being released. It's a brand new release. It's never been released before, so... Well, honey, May 1st, that's Sunday, yes. um, is International Rhema Day. Yeah. Well, what is International Rhema Day? Well, International Rhema Day is a day that we uh, tell others about Rhema. Yeah. And a day to support Rhema, special offering for Rhema, Bible Training College. You know, we keep the tuition low. Actually, tuition only pays for about 30% of what it costs to train a student. The other 70% has to come from other sources. Right, and, and this is one of them. One of the uh, sources. And so you can uh, go to rhema.org slash IRD and be a part of this. Yes, you can. Anytime you can go there and, and do this. And, but especially pray for, yes. the, for Rhema. We have 282 Bible colleges in 54 nations besides the mother school here. In, yes. in the Broken Arrow, Tulsa area. So pray for us. Tell others about Rhema Bible Training College and support. support. Well, this is a busy month. Oh, is it Yes, ever? this <laughs> week, this week, uh, we will be uh, May 1st through the 3rd in Newark, Ohio at Moore Life Church with Pastors Josh and Angie Pennington. And then we're yeah. going to Champaign, Illinois. Yes. Yes, May 4th through the 6th. That's Wednesday night through Friday night. Midwest Believers Church, Pastors Trent and Rhonda Cloyne. You can get all the information on our, at rhema.org. And hey, talking about how busy it is, 
Next week on Friday night, the 13th of May. Yes, that's we, my birthday. Yes, <laughs> we have the 48th graduating class Can you believe that? of Rama Bible College here on the Rama campus at 7 p.m. And if you'd like to come and, and attend, hey, you can just go to rbtza.org and yes. you find out all the information. We would love to have you have you come. I that, mean, it, that's right. It would be it would be great to have you come. But it, it will also be streamed. But it will be it streamed if you would like to watch it live. Yes. Now, on May, boy, you said May was busy. Look at this. <laughs> May the twenty second through the 24th, yes. that's Sunday through Tuesday, we're going to be at Victory Life Church. They're host, uh, hosting the celebration. Uh, hosting uh, at a celebration at, church. At celebration church mm -hmm. is where it's being hosted. Now, the, the, the church is Victory Life, but their facility wasn't w what we needed, yes. what they thought we needed. Yes. So, Colby has got a, another church that will allow us to come in. And, that, and so they're going to host. That's in Brandon, South Dakota. That's in Brandon, yes. South Dakota with Pastors Colby and uh, and Afton Johnson. We're looking forward to being in that area. First time I've ever been in yes. that area. And so if you know friends in that area, let them know about it, okay? That's right. And then we're going uh, over to uh, Nebraska. And that is at, uh, Tony, at Faith Family Church. Faith that Family is Church. Tony and Jeanette uh, Finley. That is yeah. Omaha, Nebraska. Right, Omaha, Nebraska. Yes. Well, darling, I guess it's about time to get out of here. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. This is the day of salvation. Glory to God. We will rejoice and be glad. It is a day of deliverance. It is a day of safety. It is a day of preservation. Hallelujah. This is The Day, a classic DVD by Kenneth E. Hagan. Plus, Foundations for Faith, a powerful study guide by Kenneth E. Hagan and How to Fulfill Your Divine Destiny, an anointed book by Kenneth W. Hagen. The book, the study guide, and the DVD can all be yours today for a gift of only $45 or more by calling 888-PRAISE-8. Or you can log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.